Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, a, a recent case came out called the Cordell versus Pallet Companies, and I'm just going to call it the Wee case because uh, it involves marijuana. Um, so I'm going to walk through this. This is a, again an important decision. Just came out December 29th, 2016. Um, I think it's it was a good result for the injured workers, and I'm going to walk through um, the case law. So, <clears throat> so I've created this PDF. And, okay, so we got a pot leaf because of the pot case or the weed case. But before I go into the Cordell uh, Pallet Company, I'm going to go through some background uh, first. So, okay, first. The first uh, concept I'm going to talk about is involuntary abandonment and voluntary abandonment. And as you can see, involuntary abandonment is when you're removed from the workplace because of, uh, because of your work injury. So here you have some guy falling off a, a ladder. Uh, <clears throat> so involuntary, something that happens to you, you didn't choose to, to be injured and, and, you, and you got injured. And because of that work injury, you're not able to continue to work. And then we have voluntary abandonment. Okay, what's voluntary abandonment? Uh, it's something you choose to do that removes you from the workplace. And so uh, I've got... You know, you could quit, you retire, you walk off the job like Leonardo DiCaprio, I guess. Uh, so, involuntary, voluntary. And these have, uh, why is this important? Because if it's a voluntary abandonment of the workplace, you are not entitled to TT. If it's involuntary, you may be entitled to TT or t temporary total disability compensation. So, okay. So uh, now the question is how, you know, you quit, you retire, uh, you, you walk off the job. And another way to voluntarily abandon the workplace is to be terminated. And specifically termination via a written workplace rule violation. And this is encapsulated in the case called Louisiana Pacific. And I've got a picture of Forrest Gump because uh, for whatever reason that reminds me of Louisiana, the movie Forrest Gump. Uh, so, all right. Um, so in the Louisiana Pacific case, there's a three-part test that the court came up with. And basically, you have a written work rule. Um, the employee knew or should have known of that written work rule. And they violated that written work rule. And you're thinking, how should I know or should I have known of the written work rule? Well, in in most cases, when you go to a new job, they're going to give you a stack of documents um, that you're going to have to fill out. And one of those documents is going to be a uh, policy manual. You may or may not have read through that policy manual, but more than likely you autograph that policy manual. And the employer will have that signed policy manual on file. So when you get injured, they'll be like, bam, you you, you sign this, uh, this policy manual. And... Here's a rule that you violated, so we're terminating you, and uh, you know you shouldn't be entitled to TT. Now, um, and I've got this little shorthand for written work rule violation. Then it's a voluntary abandonment, and then, i.e., no entitlement to temporary total disability compensation, i.e., no money. So while you're off being injured, you will get no money, which. I mean, it's bad enough that you're you have a work injury, but now you don't even have anything to tide you over while you heal and get prepared for the next, you know, returning to work or your next job. But and this is a big but, and this is encapsulated in the case called Pretty Products. If injured worker is physically incapable of returning to work, there cannot be a voluntarily abandonment of his former position of employment. So, what does this mean? If you uh, have your work injury and then your employer states that you've violated a written work rule violation, uh, if you can't return to work because of your work injury, then there is no voluntary abandonment of the workplace. And you, but uh, and then the next question, okay, uh, how do I know if I'm physically incapable of returning to work? Well, I mean, besides the obvious, you can't work. Um, Unfortunately, workers' comp world doesn't 
operate like that and everything must be documented and uh, unless it's like an obvious injury like uh, if you're paralyzed obviously you can't return to work or if your you know finger has been amputated or something and it's been X number of days you likely wouldn't be able to return to work but in most cases and to be safe you will know if you're incapable of returning to work if your doctor certifies you temporarily and totally disabled in a Medco 14 and I've done a whole video about how to fill out a Medco 14 what the Medco 14 means I suggest you watch that if you need a refresher so okay next now what happens in the situation where you uh, you know there's a written workplace rule violation but you're in physically incapable of returning to work and that is covered in the case writer stucco um, and and this is a again an injured worker still entitled to, to temporary total disability even if deemed to have voluntarily abandoned workplace via workplace rule violation if worker is still disabled at time of discharged discharge or termination or however you want whatever euphemism you want to say for being fired uh, <clears throat> So now, if you quit, that's that you're not you've voluntarily been. But if you'd been terminated, then you may still, you know, there may be uh, you may still be entitled to TT. So again, we got the work work workflow. If workplace rule violation, i.e., you uh, there's a written work rule, you knew or should have known of that written work rule, and you violate the written work rule, you're deemed to have voluntarily abandoned. But, under most circumstances, but if you're disabled at the time of that violation, then you're still entitled to TT, uh, temporarily total disability compensation. In other words, you're deemed not to have voluntarily abandoned the workplace. And this is good. Um, and I'm going to talk about how this plays out at the end of this video, but just keep this in mind. Okay, now uh, the final case that I must talk to you in regards to the background before I go into the Cordell case, a.k.a. the pot case, a.k.a. the weed case, a.k.a. the marijuana case, whatever you want to call it, is the gross two case, and that I'll call the french fry case. So you have the, the, uh, the french fry case. And in this case, and I'll, I'll stay with the court determined, and there's a fryer. And uh, so in that case, court said pre or contemporaneous conduct to not, cannot be used to, uh, as cannot be deemed a workplace rule violation, i.e. you can't have uh, voluntarily abandoned the workplace by violating a written work rule that, for conduct that happened before or at the same time of the work injury. And why does this matter? Well. Let's look at the facts of this case, and so there's this kid, uh, at some, he was cleaning a fryer, and when you clean the fryer, there was a specific way that you need to clean the fryer and if in, in a safe way so you didn't, you didn't get injured, and this kid didn't follow that sp uh, specific procedure, and in doing so, he, was, he burned himself, and the employer tried to say, well, uh, there's a written work rule uh, in the policy that says you must follow all safety protocols and if you you know violate the safety protocol then you're deemed to have uh, you know you can be terminated for that offense and so they're saying well in, in this case you violated the, the written work rule and in doing so you got injured and the courts like now nah, that's kind of ridiculous and it's not really fair so and, and, and those therefore they said nah again Conduct that happened before or at the same time of the work injury cannot be used to be deemed uh, a voluntary abandonment of the workplace. And that's that's a good decision because otherwise um, you might run into a ridiculous situation where employers are compiling dossiers of possible work, work rule violations in your file in the off chance that you would get injured and then they would be able to pull those out and say, well, you know, you know, X and X weeks or months or however long before the work injury, they'd violate this work rule. Therefore, voluntary abandonment. Therefore, no TT. Okay. Court said, no, 
And I th again, I think that's a good decision. It would really not be fair. Um, so here it is. Kid burn himself, clean your fryer, etc. Uh, I.e. stuff you did before at the same time as the work injury cannot be used to prevent you from getting TT. And I'll tell you, I you know my experience. I would just have a as an aside. Uh, when I went was when I was in college, I worked in the uh, cafeteria in the dorm, and I had you know you were assigned different tasks. And one day I was I was assigned the fryer. You know you were assigned you could be assigned the fryer, and every once in a while I was assigned the fryer. And I'll tell you, I one you always smelled like whatever you're frying. So if you're frying like chicken. You know, fried chicken, you'd, you'd smell like fried chicken for the next day. But the other thing, I was always very, uh, it just scared the heck out of me cleaning the thing. Because uh, you would drain that, that, that cooking oil onto this, like, pan below. And I was always paranoid that I was going to step in this thing. I think that's what ended up happening to the kid, but uh, in this case. So, fry oil, it scares me. Uh, anyways, okay. So, these are the cases. That will help to understand the weed case, the Cordell versus Pallet case. Um, so, and so a little background on how this will play out. <clears throat> so, if somebody smokes weed, if they smoke drugs, I mean, if they do any kind of drug or whatever, in most companies, um, if you have a work injury, you're going to have to do a post accident drug screen. Uh, it's usually at the hospital, urgent care. Uh, possibly it could, if they don't give it to you at the hospital or urgent care your employer will call you and schedule you to get a um, a drug test um, you know at some facility that they um, outsource to or it possibly could be at the workplace so um, the way the law works is if you um, if there's suspicion that you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time of the injury um, or if you have a, a, a post accident drug screen and you have a certain amount of like a drug or alcohol in your bloodstream there's a rebuttable presumption that you that that ingestion or, or consumption of that drug or alcohol caused your work injury and if that is indeed the case then uh, you're not entitled to TT and that's a rebuttable presumption what that means uh, just simply means that you have to prove because you're Pursue to be under the influence. You have to prove you can rebut it. You could prove that that it was not the reason for your work injury. In the Cordell case, what happened is um, there's a, a gentleman working on a, I think a dock. He fell off the dock. He ended up fracturing his tibia and fibula. Uh, they had a, a drug screen, I believe, at the hospital, or it could have been the day after. Um, and he was found to have marijuana in his system. So the employer, um, they conceded that, uh, you know, then they, they argued, well, they conceded that the marijuana wasn't the cause of his work injury. So they said outright, they said the marijuana in this circumstance was not the cause of the work injury. But their argument was, you know, since he tested positive for uh, weed he voluntarily banned the workplace um, and they 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 also terminated him so that he violated a written work rule and uh, they argued voluntary abandonment no entitlement to TT and to top it off they fired him termination in, in, in regards to that workplace rule uh, violation or the policy manual said no no weed in the system if you found it you, we could terminate you so they terminated him and this is this is important I think this is an important thing to understand the court said um, the fact that they terminated you that's not an issue they could terminate this this Cordell fella it was in their work it was in their policy manual they're allowed to do whatever they want as long as it's a non-discriminatory means for termination i.e. they didn't terminate him for race uh, a national origin religion etc so they said Ohio at will work state they could terminate you they terminated him that's fine but what they did say is, um, and this is important, they say even still, the employer can terminate an employee for violating a written work rule, but termination is not voluntary abandonment if discharge, dischargeable offense occurred because of injury 
and time of, at the time of termination, employee was incapable of returning to work as a result of the injury. So, in my kind of reading of this, this is it, to me, it looks like they're packaging uh, this other case law that we've discussed, uh, routers, you know, uh, um, grows to, and they're kind of re putting it out there, but, but in a specific circumstance of a, of a post accident drug screen. Um, but I, I don't really know if this really creates any new law necessarily, but uh, it certainly affirms the old law, which was good, because if they had changed, if the Supreme Court had come to a different decision, it could have been catastrophic for injured workers. But, so basically what they're saying is, uh, in this case, this post accident drug screen uh, wouldn't have happened but for the work injury. And I, I'm not really sure that's as important as this. This next one, the time of termination, employee incapable of returning to work as a result of the injury. So I almost think, because that's the number two is basically um, that uh, pretty products case. And I, uh, and pretty products basically states is if you're, if you're terminated um, and at the time you're terminated, you're incapable of returning to work. Doesn't, you don't even have to look into the reason why you're terminated. It doesn't matter. So. In, in my interpretation of it, it almost number one is kind of redundant. But if you're in that situation, this is it's very kind of a specific uh, decision, so it'll apply to you. Now, <clears throat> again, important thing to remember: the the employer conceded that the weed was not the cause of the work injury. Okay, and also important thing to remember: uh, the court said we don't care that he got terminated. That's neither here nor there we're not worried they could terminate them they're they're in their right and the employer was allowed to do so so if you choose to smoke weed and you have a work injury you may be fired uh weed may be deemed to have played a part in your work injury and then the result being no temporary total disability and finally Weed may not have played a part in the work injury, and therefore, it's a possibility that you get to temporary total disability. So, this is the Cordell case. Uh, I think it was a good case. Um, and if you find yourself in this situation, this may be apply to you. As I always explain at the end of all these videos, if you have a, a simple work injury, something where you're injured for, you know, you, you have just a minor little injury and you're back to work in the next day or in a couple hours and it seems pretty simple maybe you don't need an attorney but i would say in most other circumstances uh how workers compensation law is complicated enough that it, it really it's very very beneficial to get an attorney so as always i'd recommend or i would i think it would be awesome if you came to our office malik and malik um but in columbus ohio and uh, ohio in general there are a lot of really great uh, workers' comp attorneys that, that uh, represent injured workers. And I suggest you get an attorney. If you don't go to us, go to somebody. Um, it will pay dividends and it will, you'll avoid complications that uh, you know may cause you problems later down the line. So with that being said, I've explained the Cordell versus Pallet Company's case. Um, and hopefully this, you found some help in this. Um, otherwise, have a nice uh, afternoon or evening or morning or what time it may be. And uh, stay safe. Um, all right. Good luck. Bye.